Hello flute players of the world, my name is Liz and today I want to talk about right hand technique problems, mainly the position of the thumb and also the fifth and fourth fingers. And at the end of this video, I'm going to give you a technical exercise that you can do to once and for all address the problems of the fourth and the fifth finger, as well as the thumb position, but not just a boring technical exercise where I give you drill that is just repeated over and over. It is actually a technical exercise that I have included a cinematic uh, soundtrack behind it to make it more interesting for you. I always tell my students, don't just play your scales, play your scales musically and with intention. So let's get to the first point, which is our thumb position. Often, especially the more beginner students, uh, the thumb is way too far forward. And that's because of potentially left hand balance issues haven't really been sorted out properly. Um, but it, so the thumb being more underneath can give the illusion that you're balancing the flute a bit more. But the problem is it ends up pushing the flute up. And what you want to do is have your thumb further back. So if you see, probably this way is better on the side, you can't, if I've got my thumb too far out, you can see it sticking out. But what I want to do is draw it back and it's going to be roughly under the F key. And it's not, the pad's not directly underneath it. It's more to the side, a little bit on the side of the nail. Right, so that's going to sort of push the flute horizontally rather than vertically. And that makes a huge difference to how your right hand is sitting. It just relaxes the palm of the hand and it frees up, especially the fifth and the fourth finger. So if you've been struggling trying uh, playing passages like D, E and F sharp, for example, and you're trying to get that faster and faster, but it's not working. If your thumb is too far forward, it's really hard to get around those fingers, um, those kinds of passages really gracefully. So first of all, check your thumb position. Now, the other thing is just conscious awareness of what your fingers are doing as you transition from E to F sharp, all right? So if you practice really slow uh, passages like this, What we're trying to avoid with these two notes is the, the note that often comes up in the middle, which is this. And that's simply just a lack of coordination between the fourth finger and the, the third finger. All right, so first of all, just be really conscious of what your hand feels like, what your shoulder feels like, and what your throat feels like as you're transitioning between these two notes. You want to relax the palm of your hand as well as um, making sure the thumbs in the right position make sure the elbow is not too far up and not too far down but just relax we, we try and keep everything as natural as possible so as you transition between these two notes you're you're seeking out maximum re relaxation in the palm of the hand without losing the integrity of the, the structure to be able to successfully execute these two um, notes smoothly. The other problem is, is when we go from D to E and because a lot of, um, especially beginners, they don't want to put their pinky back down because in the beginning stages of the flute, they can't really hear the difference between um, the E being played without the pinky and with it being played um, with the pinky on. Um, but as you progress with your flute playing, it's going to become really obvious as to, in the sound, as to whether that pinky is on for the E note, for example. So, um, and of course, there's always the coordination of the index finger coming down as well. So basically, the exercise that I have for you today really just focuses on mostly on three notes, which is D, E and F sharp. The other thing with having good or bad technique is that it often comes down to how rhythmically you're playing. So you want to have that steady in a beat um, that you're synchronizing your playing to, which is why I always recommend playing your scales with a metronome, not 
absolutely every time you play scales, but spending a lot of time with the metronome on scales. When we come across a passage that feels more difficult, for example, D to E and E to F sharp, that can often be just rushed over um, because we it, it's something in our brain wants to get to the next passage that feels easier in a faster amount of time. But if we sink into the timing of it, we're going to find that our technique improves and um, more difficult passages become uh, more easy. So as you play this exercise that I'm about to give you here, I want you to think about, first of all, where is your thumb? Second of all, how relaxed is the right hand? How relaxed is your shoulder? How relaxed is your throat and your tongue? Also, are you playing it in time? And are you breathing in a way that keeps you playing in time with the music? So not only will this exercise help you address the issues around the D, E and F sharp, um, but it's also going to help you address breathing in time and expanding your breath capacity. Because when you practice with something that is rhythmical, you are forced to breathe in as economical way as possible. And the last thing to keep in mind is once you've got your head around the notes, which is the, it's very simple, the notes, um, but then go back and play it again and see how musically you can play it at the same time. There's several different focuses with technique. Sometimes it's purely focusing on the rhythm only and not paying too much attention to the sound or the musicality. And then in another practice session, you might focus purely on beautiful sound, but less on the rhythm. And then in another practice session, again, you might purely focus on musicality. And then you try and bridge these three elements together, sound, rhythm, and musicality. So I'll give you the exercise now. But before we start, I just want you to listen into the beginning of this cinematic soundtrack because it gives you the, the beat fairly uh, strongly and it helps you to get in sync with the music. So we're listening out for the semiquavers here of the strings. Here, one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. There's the semiquavers. So while we'll, we will be starting off on crotchets, we will play semiquavers as well. So let's move on to this exercise now, and be sure to um, save this video because if you spent a couple of weeks coming back to this every day, you're going to be surprised at how quickly your right hand positioning uh, improves and how much easier it is to get around um, those notes in all of your pieces. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel for more videos like this.